I think when people hear the word air gap today, they think about moving into the cloud or like they don't really get the definition. And so both of you said some stuff that I think is important that we take a moment, just a moment and define the word air gap. And we define it, I think, in two ways. What gets in and what gets out and when and what can get to it in the middle. Air gapping from a cyber recovery perspective, from our solution perspective, is the notion of having a single circuit available to move changed data only, delta changes in data and backups from the primary backup appliance in production to a vault appliance. Now, there's some key aspects to this. First of all, beyond the air gap, we all, always recommend to our customers that the vault, as we call it, has a heightened level of security around it. And that's really pretty easy to think about it. What that means is if you have a rack with a key that gets inside and the machines that are in the quote vault are in there, then you heighten that security and you have two keys or you do key checkout. Not everybody within your IT organization is, knows that you have an IT vault. You have security people that are, are involved and maybe one or two other people involved and they know. That's another level of heightened security. That's something we can do very easily, right? Now, as for the technology, we connect ideally in production, Michael, directly from one device to another, ideally with a piece of fiber, right? Direct connect, can't man in the middle, can't tap it, can't do anything like that. And then we secure it. We put a cryptographic wrapper around that tunnel. It talks to the cyber vault through a single unknown port that unknown port is only used to bring data in and write data to disk, and nothing else can traverse that circuit and talk to anything else inside our cyber vault. That circuit is impenetrable. We've tested Absolutely. it through some of the best pen testers in the world, and you can't get there. What you can do is you can launch denial of service against that port, but that's it. So this vault is basically offline, right? When it does go online, then we secure it. It's a cryptographically secure connection. Nothing can go across it except for our replication traffic. Once it goes across it, we write it to disk. And what we do, Michael, is we, we not only disable the ports that it uses, we actually up and down the actual ethernet circuit itself. So if you can imagine, the vault is cut off from the rest of the world in the way of replication of data, bringing data in until we run a job that's executed from the vault and it says bring the change data into the vault we then bring up the vault ethernet connection to the outside device we secure it we encrypt it and then we pull into the vault the change data once we see the end of data stream come in we're watching the data stream once we see end of data we actually shut down that circuit again so this connection is only online about, you know, ideally it's a math problem, right? It's like if you have a terabyte of data and you can move it at, you know, uh, you know 500 gigabits a second, then how, what is it, how long is it going to be online? We do the math, right? So uh, that's simply how it works. In that sense, bad guys can't get in, bad code can't traverse that network, bad code can't get into the vault through that network. There's essentially no way to get to our code or to our data that we're storing inside that vault from outside. If we can bring that data in, lock it down, make it truly immutable, protect the clock to make sure it's tamper proof, which we do by patent design, then scrub that data with CyberSense, make sure it's clean. Then if you, if you have an event, we have the ability to recover instantly. Nobody else gives, gives you that capability. I can't tell you the number of, of, of uh, conference rooms I've sat in with IT and security people where after everybody understands what we're talking about and creating this secure vault and, and housing that very important information, the number of times that a IT director or CIO has basically stopped the meeting and said, listen, we're probably going to do this and I want nothing about this to get outside of this room after this meeting. So he's already chosen the people that are in that room to be the ones that will know and be part of the cyber vaulting. And the other hundred people he has in his IT organization will know nothing.